Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Imaginary Creatures. It was so nice last week. We did some stories again about Thor. And you did some, some of you did some beautiful pictures. We talked about Thor's magical horse. And you had a chance to draw some pictures if you wanted to. And it was so nice to see some of you do some beautiful horses. So that was really fun to see you do those and to try them out. This week, we're going to hear another couple stories that are very interesting about some Norse characters. And as promised, I told you that I would give you a little peek into a mischievous character, Loki. But before I do that, I wanted to show you a little bit about Odin and some different um, characters and how they play out in the um, scheme of things in the gods. And so I want to share the screen here so that you can see a little bit about that. So um, there are two types of, um, remember we talked about the fact that Odin was the king of the gods. So let me turn off this light here for you. That's better. So here is Odin up here, and he, as you remember, the king of the gods. He's ruler over everybody, and he's the warrior god. Well, he's from the family of Aesir, Asir. And there were two kind of god families. There was Asir, and there was Vanir. And the Vanirs had a, a town or a, a, a keep um, that was called Vanaheim. And that's where they lived. And then the Asir family, um, their uh, group of gods, they lived in a fortress or a town that was called Asgard. Okay, that's where they were from. And so, and each of these places, each of these halls were surrounded by walls. And so then there was a big war that took place between them because they didn't get along too well. There was, as there is with a lot of different um, groups, they wanted to see who was superior. And so they had this war to see who was going to win. Now you remember Odin actually is in charge of all of them, but this was his clan. And so they had this war to see who would win and when they had that war, it turned out that, um, that really uh, th they ended up <laughs> kind of going back and forth and back and forth and, and no uh, particular um, side won. And so what they ended up doing was they ended up trading some warriors from each side as kind of a truce. So, but in the meantime, there was some damage of the wall that went around Asgard. So I'm gonna tell you a story about that in a little bit, but they did trade some people back and forth. And one of the people that was traded in that exchange kind of of the truce was um, a goddess who's probably the most famous goddess of the um, Norse mythology. And her name is Freya. I'm going to show you a picture of her right here. This is Freya. She's a beautiful goddess up here and she's riding high in the sky and look at that. She doesn't have horses, does she? No, she doesn't. So Freya was the goddess of love and beauty. She'd been married to the god Odd and he had left her and disappeared and we don't really know why. Uh, but she had mourned him for a long time because she really loved him. And when she cried, she wept golden tears. Isn't that a picturesque, a picturesque um, uh, idea? Golden tears dripping down from her cheeks. Nevertheless, she was just absolutely beautiful and gods and men and giants all adored her and loved her. Um, she uh, was, uh, Odin made Freya a goddess of death 
She presided over battles and caused wars between kings on the earth. She flew over the battlefield in her chariot pulled by her two cats. And you can see the two cats right there. She chose half of the bravest warriors to accompany her to see Seersrumir, her hall in Asgard. And remember I told you she was traded over to Asgard to live. Like all of the Vanir, Freya was a fertility goddess. She brought prosperity by granting good harvests and successful fishing. She took special care of women who were getting married or having babies and made sure that many healthy children and animals were born. The boar was her symbol and it was her brother's. This is her brother over here, Freyr. Freya's magic. After the war between the gods that I was just telling you about, Freya went with her father and brother to live in Asgard with the Aesir. Freya was a powerful witch who taught the Aesir her skills. She owned a magic falcon skin, and when she put it on, her spirit could fly through the nine worlds. And she made prophecies and foretold the future of all the newborn babies. So that's a little bit about her background. Now I'm going to tell you an interesting story that has a little bit to do uh, with Freya and with Loki. And I wanted to show you, here's the interesting horse that goes along with this story, this interesting horse. And as I'm reading about it, see if you notice something a little different about this horse that maybe you wouldn't notice at first glance that's a little bit different. And this is a picture of Loki, Loki on Slapnir. So the Aesir were anxious to rebuild Asgard's wall. And remember I told you when they had that battle that the wall around Asgard, there was some damage during that war. And one of the things that happened was the wall around Asgard, which was the Aesir's um, land or territory, that wall was damaged. So they were really eager to rebuild that wall so that their area, their territory would be protected. And so they were anxious to rebuild Asgard's wall. It had been ruined in the war with the veneer, but they could not find anyone to do the job. Then one day a writer came to Asgard saying he had a proposal for the gods. He offered to repair the wall. His price was the moon, the sun, and Freya as his wife. Hmm. The gods, especially Freya, were outraged. But sly Loki, oh, here comes Loki into the story. Sly Loki suggested the gods should accept on the condition that the work was to be completed without help in six months. They knew that this would be impossible. But if the builder agreed, they would get most of the wall mended without paying since the contract would be broken. So they figured nobody could do this in six months. So we'll get most of the work done. And so it will be a win for us because he won't finish it in six months. And then we'll have almost all the wall built and we won't have to pay him. The stranger agreed to the terms as long as he could have the help of his horse Svaldirfalri, which the gods allowed. The horse dragged huge rocks to the wall in a net and stra the stranger worked so hard it began to seem he would complete the wall in time. The gods were furious and told Loki he must get them out of this bargain. So they were really worried it looked like he was going to finish in time. Oh my goodness, Loki, you better do something to make sure he doesn't get this job done. Loki, the shape changer, remember we had talked about the fact he could change into all these different kinds of shapes. So Loki, the shape changer, had an idea. As the stranger took Svaldarli to fetch his horse, remember his special horse, to fetch the final load of the rocks on the last day of the six months, Loki appeared disguised as a beautiful lady horse and pranced around playfully. Svaldifari ran after the mare into the woods and could not be caught. 
So the workman had no horse to help him and he could not finish the job. So he failed and they did not have to pay him with the sun and the moon and Freya as his wife. In his fury, the builder burst out of his magic disguise, revealing his true shape as a rock giant. Ha! So he wasn't just a regular guy after all, he was a rock giant in disguise. The gods had no qualms about killing him for trying to fool him. You remember that giants and gods are enemies. So Loki wisely stayed away from Asgard for a while because you remember he had convinced them to take the, the contract in the first place. So he decided he would slink off for a while and, <laughs> and make himself scarce. When he returned, he brought a fantastic eight-legged horse called Slapnir. Slapnir was the son of Svaldifari and the mare Loki had been. He could gallop over land, sea, and air. Loki gave the horse to Odin to regain his favor. So had you noticed when Loki was riding that this horse actually has eight legs? How about that? Ah, uh, that's really a truly magical horse. And you can imagine how fast that horse could go. So when Loki uh, made this beautiful mare, he had actually imitated what Slapnir looked like. And then when he finally did come back into the picture again, after enough time that he thought that he would be able to come back and they wouldn't be quite so angry that they had cooled off a bit, he actually brought Slapnir back, who happened to be of the offspring of the rock giant's horse that had been helping all along to build that wall. So that is an interesting story, isn't it? I thought you would especially like that. And it shows too how tricky Loki could be and how he uses his shape changing to actually his advantage. And he was a tricky, wily guy. So I hope you enjoyed that story. Those two stories today, the story of Freya and the story of Loki and Slapnir, the horse. And I am going to post another activity for you to do. I hope you try it. And if you do, um, then uh, go ahead and post it and have a nice week. Bye-bye.